Well, talking to us about breast cancer, the financial bit of it, the support bit of it, I have two beautiful humans with me in studio. We have George and Lucy Karibunisana. Thank you. Great to have you here in studio. And just so we start and, you know, introduce ourselves, George, we'll start with you. And this is your camera. All right. Uh, good morning. My name is George Njoroge. I am a hospital psychologist at Shiromo Hospital Group. And I'm happy to be here and uh, looking forward for the conversation just to be able to demystify this issue of bet, uh, breast cancer and uh, how it is related to mental health. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming through. Mm. Lucy. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lucy Njeri Ayuki. I'm a breast cancer, but uh, we are omitting the word survivor to conquer us. Absolutely. I like it. <laughs> yes. I like it. And I'm here to give hope, to shed light, and to share my story and inspire someone and maybe have a change impact in the society at large. You're doing exactly what this coach today is saying, you. you know, just being able to step to step into that space and share and through your story maybe encourage someone or give them hope. And being a breast cancer conqueror, yes. um, how long ago was this and how has the journey been for you? Today, around this year marks around five years. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed in 2017 mm -hmm. after just stopping my one and a half year old kid. Um, my breast continued to produce milk and uh, I got this leaf knot that was not going away mm. for a time. And uh, when I'm having my menses, it was enlarging. So I went to seek, uh, I went to the hospital to seek what it was and uh, they said that it was mastitis since I had just stopped breastfeeding my, okay. my one and a half year old child. Mm -hmm. I did not take it lightly. I went to a second hospital for mm -hmm. a second opinion and they said it was some fat deposits in the duct. And I was booked in for a local surgery. And when the, the surgeon went in the breast, he found that it was something different. So he just took a small piece and was taken, I was given to take to the pathologist and it turned out to be breast cancer. Dr. Kasinoma, to be precise. Okay. Yeah, it was not easy. No, I can imagine. You were not, you were just going in for a surgery and out procedure. Yeah, and uh, funny enough, my mom was ailing from throat cancer. So you can imagine we were already sick emotionally because of seeing our mom sick. Yeah. And now this time it is me personally and it is happening to me, it's not somebody else. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm the one who is sick now. It was not easy, and I, I think I contemplated suicide. I had seen my mom with Tari through the treatment, the financial aspect, yeah. stigma, name calling, profile. It was hard for me. I had a very young family. You can hear my last born was just one and a half years old. And we've never heard of a survivor. We only knew that if you are diagnosed with cancer, uh, you it's are like death sentence right yeah, there. So yeah, we had, n we had never seen one or heard of one, so it was hard. Um, but it didn't happen, I never committed suicide. <laughs> yes, I went and seeked uh, treatment and I went to Kenya International Hospital. That's where I got my treatment and I had my breast removed. But it was not easy. You can imagine, you know, people with two breasts, yeah. and now you are here being told that uh, you'll be having one breast. Yeah. And when you walk in there, they tell you, we know whether we'll remove everything or we'll salvage something. So it's up to them. And I had my left breast removed. I did mastectomy. And afterwards, there was chemo, and there was radiation, and hormonal treatment. And today, I'm a success story that, indeed, in Kenya, treatment can work. I think it's, it's a win on very many aspects. I know we went through the story pretty fast, <laughs> but um, I think it's, it's a win on very many levels. Even having had your treatment here at when everybody else is like, ah, if you get this, they can't, Kenya always is Saidika. But then today we are also winning on that front. Um, George, when she talked about, you know, even like her story is different in terms of, I have been diagnosed with breast cancer and it's not new because mom is still going through it. Mm -hmm. And she's talking about stigma in society. She's talking about name calling, profiling, and all of that. Do you think that has changed or was it something that happened back then? Are we, are we seeing things different now? I think uh, the issue of stigma still continues. Mm -hmm. And I think just to mention, 
80% of non-communicable diseases happen in our c in Africa, you know, the low income and middle income countries. So that's why you find we having more cases of cancer and all these non-communicable infections. Mm -hmm. And um, apart from now what she's mentioning, and I think I love the fact that she now refers to herself as a conqueror, yeah. to something positive. Yeah. Um, stigma is one major uh, issue when you talk about breast cancer because one, people don't understand what this is and I think from an, from an African perspective, it can be seen as a curse. Remember, the mom was sick, mm -hmm. and now she's sick, and it they're oh, still. So it becomes that family that. That family, and I think that that labeling, that family instead yes. of calling Lucy, yeah. that family which has mm. uh, this particular condition. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the major psychological effects, and I think um, from research which has been done elsewhere, because you haven't done much research psychologically here. Mm -hmm. Around 66.1% of people who go through non-communicable uh, diseases and breast cancer included mm -hmm. suffer depression and 33% uh, get to suffer anxiety. So you may have breast cancer, but on top of that, you have depression. Okay. As she said, and I think I can correct her, nowadays you don't say, I tried committing, committing suicide. suicide no. yeah. We say this person attempted, mm. and even if someone, ha, yeah, exactly, and if mm. someone died after attempting, we say they died by suicide. Yes, because she hasn't committed any crime; she was just uh, reacting to the emotional stress that she was experiencing, yeah. and um, and that is why there's this conversation on decriminalizing suicide yes. in the country. That's true. So um, the uh, the psychological effect is enormous, you know, and apart from that, there's that issue of feeling hopeless. Before she was diagnosed, I think she's mentioned they were still struggling with the emotional with effect from mom. Mm. And apart from now, the emotional aspect of it is finan uh, financial. Mm -hmm. And also, truth be told, it has a huge burden financially. Yes. So combining all that, now you have the emotional burden. Yeah. Which is heavy. Very heavy. It is a lot. And maybe Lucy, you can tell us when mom was going through, you know, treatment for cancer and you now getting into that as well did, did mom have any support system was the hospital ev ever ever provided a group where she could be able to talk and meet other people or even you as well where you needed to understand what is happening to me what does this mean to me i mean you were just hit by this huge words and oh we're going to cut your breast oh we're going to do this now there's chemo now there's radiation let me see the support groups are not there they were not there. Yeah, neither the support system. Mm -hmm. That's why I said we never had of, mm. or we never knew of. Mm. At least if we knew or had of, there could be some rays for us uh, of hope. But now we are there and close to ourselves mm. in fear. And uh, the hospital she went, there was none. And even me, after I was through the treatment, is when I got to know of support groups. But basically mm -hmm. what... Uh, I personally did. Mm -hmm. I think when uh, I went to Kenyatta, mm -hmm. you you are lining up for the clinic to be seen by the oncology. You make friends. You make friends because these people have the same predicament like you. They are here because they have this same disease that you are suffering from, and uh, from that you created a good rapport. And then I, we could share. We could share. Are you experiencing this? I'm experiencing this. This is how you are journeying. This I'm, how I'm journeying. How have you been? That was what was there. For the financial aspect, let me say, it is good to always speak uh, Please. Uh, the way it was. Yeah. NHF came in through for me okay. that particular time, and it also came in through for my mom. So, so NHIF actually covers it did, it did, it, it did. did. Oh, okay. It did. Did it change? Things have changed. Oh. Yes, and not for the better, for oh the worse. No. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they covered for my mom. Uh, the chemos she did and the radio she did, she never did surgery. But for me, I went to a government hospital, KNH, so it covered for me the chemo, even the mastectomy. I never paid a shilling. I never paid. So for financial aspect, at least there was some relief. But yes. the emotional burden was there. And uh, all these other, I mean, I mean, cancer has an ugly face. Don't be deceived by what you're saying now. This is a <laughs> after the storm, the financial aspect. At least NHF covered for me, so let me say that. But there was no, I didn't know of any support group. I didn't know of anybody who had survived cancer. I later on came to know about them now. 
and uh, as you're talking now, I'm in so many that you'll find me there in Kangemi, in Kawangware, in Kiambu, in Huruma, in Kaliobangi. Doing what that you are not able to get. Yes, and uh, at least I speak out. We are many of us, but people are still in their cocoons hiding mm -hmm. because they are fearing to come out in public. And I said, why should the other people suffer when they can at least hold somebody's hand and tell them it journeys like this, it feels like this, we are mm -hmm. together. That's why they decided to come out publicly. Yes. And we have so many other beautiful stories from other conquerors out there. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping to have a very big impact in the cancer world. We call it cancer world. Because you did it alone. Yeah. And maybe, George, you can help us on this. How important mm -hmm. is the support? Because she is in them now, doing mm -hmm. them now. Mm -hmm. But she is probably, Lucy is in a space where I will do everything that I needed mm -hmm. and I did not get at that point. Mm -hmm. How important is that system? Mm -hmm. Let me start by saying we are social beings. You yes, know? we are. And we belong to families and we need people to help us. Mm. So social support is very key, not only for breast cancer, for any other condition. Yeah. Number one, because with this emotional burden, you need someone who you can talk to, just not necessarily to get all the answers, but just to be able to pour out these emotions that you're experiencing. Yeah. Because at some point you feel very angry at yourself you get angry at god mm -hmm. and uh, you may experience now these stages of grief you know because at some point you're in denial yeah. you are angry you're beginning you know and of course you you're going to get depressed so in the process before you get to acceptance support is very very important and maybe Lucy will share as we continue in those support groups you get you get to hear similar stories so you, you tend to feel that warmth Mm -hmm. you know because you're surrounded with people mm -hmm. who actually understand you yeah. call it a sense of belonging exactly yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. you get yeah. a sense of belonging yeah. yeah because they're not talking from you know from theory mm. they're mm. very practical yeah when someone tells you i don't know what i'm going to pay on monday when i'm going for my chemo you know and you're like i know how that feels yeah, yeah. and it is easier for that person to go ahead and support you compared to someone who's hearing it from you know from the outside, maybe from the outside circle. Yeah. So social support is very key, yeah, especially for. And this cancer. is needed even after. Mm -hmm. What happens then? Because so, say for example, you need financial support, and it looks like the biggest thing mm -hmm. that you need at the moment. I need to go to hospital. Mm -hmm. I need to get uh, surgery done. I need. I need. I need. I need. And then I need money. So mm -hmm. you get the money, and then what happens after that? Does when I'm walking through the journey, I'm a conqueror, yes, I am recovering and I'm doing okay. But am I okay really? Does the support end there? Or does it continue afterwards? Is it important for it to continue? I usually say in, the, in a loud voice that life begins after you've been diagnosed with cancer. Because you are a total new person in a new body, in a new sphere, you don't even understand yourself. Mm. I want to give you an example. Mm -hmm. Early this year, there was a, a scare that I have a reoccurrence. Yeah. So you can imagine the fear that I was feeling deep down in me. Um, they have been giving a lot of hope, and now they, they are saying that we are seeing some, uh, some leaf nodes that are suspicious. So you need to do test one, test two, test two, test three. And uh, the NHF was not covering. So now so you have is not covering yes. anymore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, it just depends with the institution. So I had to get the money out of my pocket to do that biopsy. It was 15,000. You see the times I had right now. Uh, I had to call 15,000 and they didn't have the money. So I started looking for help. At this particular time, everything has collapsed due to COVID. And yeah. people are like, oh. I wish, we I don't wish, have jobs. Yes. We've got in a pay yes. cut. The world is shutting down. Somebody promised me a... Uh, that's not a lot of money. Just go to Kenyatta once here, they are calling me. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Kenyatta, they switched off their phone. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a short break on that note. <laughs> we're going to take a very short commercial break. If you have any questions whatsoever, we're talking Martin's breast cancer. And we have Lucy and George in the building who will be with us during this conversation. If you have any questions whatsoever, just send them to to triple one triple four triple one. This is going to cost you a shilling for you to do that. We'll be looking at them after this very short commercial break.
Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mukali. A very good morning to you. Where are you tuned in from? Are you a part of this conversation? Guess what? You can be a part of it. Send in your questions, comments, opinions, words of encouragement. Triple one, triple four, triple one. That is our SMS line. Switch TV KU on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. We're talking matters, breast cancer, the financial implications of that, the support that is needed. We have a clinical psychologist in the building and a breast cancer conqueror, Lucy and George. So, Lucy, you you were just explaining to us how you had a scare recently during COVID and you needed to do tests and you needed 15,000. You didn't have it. Then you were told you were going to go and the guy switched off the phone. So I was there in the morning and like I've already queued and I'm very sure that he was going to send me the, the, the money. money. So he didn't send me the money. Do you imagine what I felt? Did you even have a backup plan? No. I felt like I was going to bust. And I was like, those people that are being diagnosed this particular minute with the financial difficulties that are there, what are they feeling? What is the experience? So I went back home, but I was beaten 10 mil. I was beaten 10 mil. And uh, I asked myself, when do I matter? Yes, Lucy, when, when do I matter? Here I am, I fought. I'm still fighting, that's why I told you that I'm a new being, so the scare of uh, reoccurrence is always there. And these people are not giving me the support that I needed. So I had to retrieve to myself and ask myself, am I needed when I'm alive or, my, or I'm needed when I'm dead? Oh <laughs> so I am very outspoken. I got to talk to somebody who was in Kenya, and I told them, now what do we do when it comes to this? And they told me, don't lose hope, continue pushing. So I pushed and pushed. I called two or three or four friends, they came in for me, and the, my dad also came in for me. This particular time, what was I doing? Familiar, what was I doing? What was I in? Some people were making it. They came in for me, and they did the test, and it was, it was negative, and I slept for two weeks. Yes, I slept for two weeks. Just the relief, just the joy. I was like, <sighs> yeah, thanks yeah. God. It is tough. It is. It is very tough. So those guys that are on treatment or that are being diagnosed at this particular time, things are very hard. Right now, I was told by another colleague of mine, we do advocacy with her, the consultation has risen from 650 at Kenyatta to 1,000. Na sisi tunakimbilianga wapi? Kenyatta. 1,000? To 1,000, Bob. So you can imagine the Wanjikos, we call ourselves Wanjiko mm. because we can't afford the consultation of 4,500 in these big, big hospitals. But funny enough, the, the oncologists are the same. So I'd rather queue at Kenyatta until uh, that particular time and see him at 650. But now it is 1,000. And we're asking, are we still going to win this fight? Mm. Are we going mm. to win this fight? Mm. We've been campaigning for it to be free. Yeah. Kabisa, kabisa. Like, you see, in, in HIV, I mean, HIV AIDS, they have positive results because everything is zero, zero. Yeah. We've been campaigning for that. It's, it has not gone through. So. People are going mad. They are going haywire, and people are saying, "I will not fight. I will even. I will not even want to try because the financial aspect is uh, is not is it's skyrocketing." Not yeah, do. yeah. Well, Hando, we've had many conversations around, uh, or had stories around how you need to change how you eat, and that you can heal yourself by eating vegan or eating raw or juicing, and we've also had the the psychological impact of just being able to heal yourself from inside and I don't know how true this is. Is it possible and how important is it for you to immediately start this journey even as you go for your chemo, even after you've been diagnosed, your radiation, before you go through, while you're going through all of that to be able to be in a mental state that also helps your body to just, you know, take mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. what is coming and be positive through it all? Mm -hmm. <coughs> That's a very good question. And uh, not only in relation to breast cancer, our mental state really influences a lot of things. Like the way we are seated here, the way we are mentally is enabling us to be able to have this conversation. See? So for breast cancer, because you're bombarded with all this emotional uh, burden and you need to digest all this information and the diagnosis, what now the psychological aspect of it does, it helps you to prepare to at least fight. So aspect of having um, we call it dealing with the negative thoughts that you may have, you mm. know, because the fears and uh, stress, they actually reduce your immunity, you know. Okay. That's what you'll find when you're even burnt out, you're more likely to have the common cold, you know, mm. some mm. few infections, because it does um, reduce your immunity. 
So when you're in a good mental state or psychological state, you're in a better space to even fight because your body is more or less um, preparing itself to go forward to the battlefield. So dealing with the negative thoughts, the fears that one may have, and being positive that I can be able to do this, I can be able to fight this, I can be able to you know, gather up the support system for me to move forward, that really goes a long way mm -hmm. in helping you to, to fight. Before we went on the break, you are mentioning about um, one may have the finances, but still the mental state is not in a good space. Yes. That can happen. You may have all the money that you need to go and seek help, mm -hmm. but if you're not in that mental state to actually fight this, then it becomes very, very hard. And I think now that we have Lucy, she can be able to tell us more about what mental state was she in yeah. throughout this to fight. To be able to fight this exactly. level yeah. and be able to, you know, wake up and now encourage people. Mm. Even when you were going through your scare, I'm sure you did not stop to be like, Acha Kwanza Nijichunge Nini You still probably showed up for them. Uh, being positive, it pays. Let me say it pays. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I decided I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't just sit there with the pity parties and crying and everything. Mm -hmm. In fact, life had start s started and life has to go on. Yeah. Uh, never one moment did, did cease. I, I, I am a mother, I have kids, so I need to pay school fees, mm -hmm. to pay rent. There's food to be put on the table. Treatment is asking for money too. So I decided let me try this and take it positively. And uh, as he has just said, the mental aspect is very important. At uh, this particular time last, last month, I went up Mount Kenya through the support of Kilele and I summited. So we want to tell the world at yes. large that there's life beyond cancer. Yes. And I'm very grateful to Kilele Health that lady is working tremendous with survivors, and she's focusing on uh, we can use survivors to change the story mm -hmm. and to to enlighten the people and mm -hmm. to win this war. Uh, she came to me. She called me. She asked me, "Would you want to try?" And I was like, "You are mad. You want me to try that? Do you know my body, the the aches that I feel, and sometimes your body is fine. You wake up in the morning and you have that fatigue, and you feel like you can't." Yeah. But she has, Benda has <coughs> pushed us and like, Muneza Fanya ina, Muneza Toboa. And uh, despite the negative, despite the challenges, whatever it is, uh, if you put it in your mind, if you focus and put it in your mind, it's very much doable. So as he's saying, people, let's put on a spirited fight. Let's put on a spirited fight. And uh, you can't fight alone. You yeah. need the society. You need the medical practitioners. You need uh, your family because you need a family support. Everybody should come on board. Uh, you've talked about uh, healing the body itself yeah. when you're sick. Yes. When you're sick, and yes. I'm repeating this, yes. and the people, I need to be quoted. When you feel you're sick, go to the hospital. That's true. Don't go to the juicing center. Mm -hmm. Go to the hospital. Those people have gone through education. They know what to do, and they have a plan for you. When you're diagnosed with cancer, go to a hospital with an oncology clinic, fully mm. clinic. Mm -hmm. Don't go have your surgery at uh, this place. Then they tell you they have chemo at this place. Then the chemo mm. the other side is cheaper. No. Let them have a good plan for you mm -hmm. so that they can do a good follow-up for you mm -hmm. and uh, the treatment will work. About nutrition, yes, there's, there's a lot of queries. They tell you to eat a healthy, ba a, a healthy balanced diet. Mm -hmm whole meal food, people say don't do processed food, others don't do this, don't do this. I usually tell people, do what works for you. Yes, because there's a, there's a fight with the nutritionist. The person who saw me <laughs> told me, don't do milk, don't do wheat, don't do beef, don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do, and they followed. But when I went to the hospital, they told me, eat everything, everything is good. So you see, there's a collision. Mm. But I knew where my boundary was and yes. what I did for myself. Yes. Mm. But in another aspect, they do work. Yeah. But first, seek conventional treatment. That is what I did okay. personally. Okay. And I followed suit. There's things that I do in Yamaji. It's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a question mm. here. Morning, Mikali. I have pain in my breast at night. I'm worried if it could be a symptom. How did Lucy notice that she had breast cancer? 
what were her symptoms at the time? Uh, what they say is that if you have a leaf node or a node, and you, you can feel it, you can feel it. Uh, women, our body tends to change. When you're in your menses, when you're, you're ovulating, you're, the, the feeling of your breast do change. So unless you go for screening or you do a self-examination, you lie on your back mm -hmm. and feel all the quarters, yeah. if you can see, feel anything, you can't tell. Just because you have pain in your breast that you have cancer, you can't tell. You can't tell. Go to the hospital, be screened. When you're screened, they'll tell you it's this or this. And uh, we also have uh, nodes in our breast mm -hmm. that are not cancerous. They yes. are benign. So you can't just conclude that could they be having cancer? They might have cancer. No. Just yeah. go get checked. And this is that month. Yes. Just in case you were wondering, oh, Pesila Tokawapi, there's so many centers that are actually having the screenings for free. Yes. I don't know if there's anywhere you know that you could recommend people to just pop in this month to just get checked and get a pap smear while at it as well. All right. October is breast month. Uh, cancer it's breast it's breast cancer month yes mm. it's pink we call it pink mm. in most hospitals the rates are subsidized and some are free yes and when people are called for screening please people can be any and when you hear that there is screening somewhere go and kill like any other person yeah. and of course these are follow-up mm. so we have them in kenyatta we have all of them in Kijabe, all of them, and even the open, we mm -hmm. still have them. The county governments are still having theirs. The so, happening. what is there is to uh, make ujinga, chini, na woga, chini. Yes. You go get Just yourself screen. checked. Yeah. If you're good, you're good to go. Okay. If there's something suspicious, you know what to do. How can people get in touch with you? Um, <laughs> I'll give out my number. Okay. Uh, my number is 0710-345-093. Okay. Yes, you can get in touch with me. Let's walk this journey. You can't walk alone. We that need to so walk true. together. Mm. And uh, there's so much that needs to be covered. That Mikali. is so true. There's so much. Is, yeah. Uh, that can needs you hear to the be to Yeah. Just <laughs> to like be covered. Mikali, we need to pay our and, bills. Uh, and uh, just I've said that, yeah. Kila Kitu Niapa, we went up. Mount Kenya mm. via Kilele Health, okay. 11 cancer survivors. This was Kilele 2, there was Kilele 1, okay. and they still went. Okay. So okay. we can do this. Okay. Yes. How can we get in touch with you, George? Um, uh, as I said before, I work for Chiromo Hospital Group, so they can walk into any of our branches in Nairobi. And of course, we have a toll free number because I know right now, as you yes, said, please. we are in hard times. Yes. So 0800 uh, 0 Say that again. Zero eight zero zero two two zero triple zero. Free. Free. Talk. Just free. call in. Talk to someone. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. Thank you so much, Lucy. Welcome. Mm -hmm. We feel like we needed an hour to do this. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to quickly pay our bills, and we will be right back. This is full circle with Mikali.